Welcome back to the channel. I'm Evan, this is Origin Painting, and today I'm going to be working on a company champion. So the company champion isn't something I've thought about taking before. Fortunately, one of the guys I know, John, over at Blood Angels Commander, has a video breakdown covering these guys. And honestly, it turns out that they are pretty good. So I figured I'd paint one up for myself, and as a thank you to John, I'm going to paint a second one up and send it over his way. That second one is what you're going to see in this video. Alright, so the first step in getting after this was actually choosing what I was going to paint. Decided on this company champion. This is a little bit of a conversion. Most of the pieces from this are from the Indominus box. The shield is Bladeguard Veteran. The torso is going to be the Judiciar. The helmet is actually from an Eradicator. And then this right arm assembly was thrown together in the bits box. Since this is something I'm doing for John, I wanted to kind of match it up to his style. And if you guys have been watching any of his videos, especially his hobby hangouts, you'll see that he's using a lot of his gold on his elites. So I think we're going to go that route. Now for this one, I'm going to go all brushwork. I've already got my highlights in, my zenithal. I did airbrush that, but I'm going to come back in and actually brush in all the extra color. I could lay down some of this copper and then black over the robes like I'm going to do anyway, but I just wanted to start with a brush, end with a brush. It's something I haven't done in a long time. For the golds here, I'm starting with copper, mixing some black in just to get my shadows. You can see here, I'm feathering that in to the recessed areas, and I'm also using a silver as a highlight. That silver is going to be blended into the copper. And then the lightest points, the areas where the sun hits the strongest, are going to be pure silver. And here's that black I was talking about. This is just coal black. Comes in nice and matte. I really like it for cloth, uh, textile stuff. Things that wouldn't normally shine. And once I've got that down, I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of blue. And water that down. This is going to be a lot more of a glaze and less of an actual paint. I'm just going to start building up highlights coming in through multiple passes, uh, building up the opacity, letting that blue show through a little more each time. I chose the blue as the highlight color because the rest of the stuff on this model, the copper and the red, are a warm color. So I want to keep this blue as a cool to really contrast to those. What I'm doing here is I'm just coming in and hashing the raised areas. This is just adding more texture into it and a couple areas that are visually interesting. The entire robe should not be just this black blue blend. It needs something. And he is being painted up as a blood angel, so let's grab some burnt red. This is going to go on his shoulder pad first, and several other areas. I'm going to start with this burnt red to get my base down, and then I'll start blending up from there, going through a bold pyro red, and later on all the way up to orange. Those future steps are going to be, again, much more of a glaze, building up the opacity towards the top of that shoulder, anywhere where the light would actually hit the brightest. Real quick, almost forgot guys, uh, giveaway video, 500 subs. If you like free stuff, check out the card above or the link below at the end of the video. Alright, and for all these browns, we're going to go with a light umber, and then to tint that, I'm just going to add pure white. That's going on the script on his right shoulder pad, as well as all these skulls that are all over this model. I guess it wouldn't really be a proper Warhammer model if it didn't have a bunch of skulls hanging out. Here's some more use of the red. I had something on the right, something on the left, and I wanted a little more emphasis in the front of the model. So I decided to paint out the trim here. Originally it was going to be silver, but I think this red is going to stand out much better. It'll also complement this sword, which I also decided to do in red. Everything in these models is about balance, and just trying to figure out where to put these colors. Once again, starting with the burnt red, working up through bold pyro red, through orange, and I'm actually putting a little bit of yellow into this, just to really push that contrast. Free PSA guys, do not throw old brushes away, you will find a use for them. In this case, I'm going to try and do a molten core on my sword. I've seen the effect done by a lot of guys. I know I'm not going to get anywhere close to pulling it off the way they do, but it's going to be fun. It's something I haven't tried before, so let's go give it a shot. The trick here is keeping the outside of the blade dark 
and then gradually building up the color and the vibrancy in the center just to give it that light emitting effect. You can see in the very center of this thing I'm actually coming back with pure white and a small brush and just stippling that in. I don't want a nice pure solid line. I want some variation in there. Moving back over to the cloak, it's time to start my edge highlights. This is going to be comprised of blue, black, and white. We're going for a shade that's brighter than the coat, but not so gaudy as to go pure white. Kind of the easiest way to break immersion is just to slap a white on there, because it's going to look out of place. Sure, it's going to be your brightest thing, it's going to catch the eye, but it just won't look right. In order to make this wash a little more manageable and to avoid becoming an internet meme, I'll just put a little bit in this container. It's easy, it's simple, saves you a lot of money in the end. This is Agrax Earthshade. It's gonna go all over my golds and my reds, and really it'll tone that down and give some nice rich value to that gold. Time to get some brown on the base. It's gonna be one solid coat, and then I'm gonna come in with this, a tinted version of that same thing. Just a lot of white added into it, and that'll create natural variation in the ground, making the entire effect a little more believable. All right, John, this scroll is tiny, buddy. Sorry if I mess this up, but we will try and get some BAC in there for you. Once again, if you guys aren't familiar with this, Blood Angels Commander, John runs that page. Excellent if you are into Blood Angels. Great tactics, tips, techniques, all sorts of stuff over there. Go check it out. All right. So let's take a quick look. A couple more things I want to do. One of those being this blood drop. I really wanted to get something on that shoulder pad. It's a beautiful, big, open surface. Don't leave big, beautiful, open surfaces. Even if it's amateurish like my free hand here, get something on there. It's going to be interesting, even if that's something's just a little battle damage. To finish it off, a little bit of PVA, a little bit of flock. That's all it needs. And then I'll seal this entire thing with matte varnish. That'll help tie everything together. It'll keep the flock in place and prevent wear on this model. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. A little bit different workflow for me. Going back to the brush, it was a nice change. If you guys are stuck in a rut, it helps to break up what's going on, to change your style, change your techniques. I really enjoy painting. I enjoy making these videos. And I'm really glad I can share that with you. If you want to know when that sub goal drops, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you'll see the video when it goes live. It'll probably only be a one week window to get entered, and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out. Thanks for letting me share your day guys, I really do appreciate it. As always, I will see you in the next one.